I did my PhD work in the lab of Michael Hangartner working on apoptosis in C. elegans. So a tiny little worm where um, during development 131 cells die. And we ask questions like why do these cells die? What must happen that these cells do not die? And I particularly focus on the question how hypoxia signaling, which means low oxygen levels, um, is actually linked to the decision of a cell to die. And what I found was that hypoxia signaling completely prevents from undergoing apoptosis and identified a novel gene which actually mediates this, um, this link between apoptosis and hypoxia. And interestingly, it turned out that this was a non-cell autonomous function, um, meaning that actually one cell could tell another cell whether or not to die. And we have actually good evidence that um, a similar process could also be true in certain tumors. First of all, um, the, the decision between life and death is, of course, of fundamental importance in any kind of context. Um, I'm particularly interested in apoptosis in the context of tumor biology. So we know for a long time that a tumor has to learn how to prevent undergoing apoptosis. And on the other hand, um, most cancer therapies are actually also um, ultimately converging on a common pathway inducing apoptosis. So apoptosis actually underpins both processes, cancer genetics as well as cancer therapy. And the second um, part of the story was, of course, um, context of tumor hypoxia. So most, if not all, solid tumors have areas within the, within the tumor which are actually hypoxic. And these cells in the middle of the tumor, which are hypoxic, try then, um, to, to adapt to these new conditions. So my thesis was actually about linking these two processes with each other. So uh, I'm a postdoc and in, in still in the lab of Michael Hangartner. And um, I'm continuing with hypoxia responses in C. elegans. But uh, later on, would also um, go into clinics and I would like to combine these two things, medicine and, and basic science. It's, it's quite important, at least for me, to be um, inspired by a real clinical problem where I see that you can really, if you answer this, this scientific question, that you can really make a difference at the end, maybe for a patient. It can be if in five years, it can be in 10 years, but um, that, that's my long-term goal. Well, I, I would say um, you have to find a question where you are really genuinely interested in. Um, don't choose a topic um, just because it's a trendy, um, it's a trendy um, topic or, or just because you think it will be a good paper at the end. Um, choose a topic where you are really interested in because this is what keeps you passionate about, about science. And once you found this question, um, give everything you got to answer actually these questions and even if it means to work day and night um, and, and just pursue what you have to do.